Welcome back to Real English with Real Teachers. We are Harry and Charlie, in case you get confused. And on our channel, we always like to introduce you to our favourite British television and radio shows that we think will be interesting for you. And through those, we like to give you great listening practice to uh, two native speakers talking at their natural speed, but also introduce you to lots of useful vocabulary. Of course, yes. So this one that we're talking about is called Desert Island Discs, and it's a programme on the radio, on Radio 4 at the moment, that's been going for years and years. It's got thousands of episodes. Yeah. Uh, it does go on for a while, so we're going to shorten it a little bit. But the basics are that someone is going away to a desert island forever and they need to choose some songs in the actual thing. It's eight songs and then you get a luxury item and a book of your choice. So we're going to interview Harry for this one and uh, see what options he has to whisk him away to the desert island. Lovely. Yeah? You ready? Let's do it. Yeah? And these songs should like define my life, should they? They should, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should I go get ready? Go get ready, yeah. Get your uh, appropriate outfit for your desert island. Is it hot? Very. Very nice. Very nice shirt. Yeah. Did you go to... One more button. Ah, it's pretty hot. Keep, keep the button. Alright, so you're uh, off to the desert island soon. Yeah. Let's okay. start with your preferred music. Okay. Okay. What uh, What would your first song be that you would take to this desert island? Okay. So my first song. It was my first ever album that I bought. Oh right. Yeah. I went to W H Smith's with my dad. Good shot. Yeah. Is really. It still good. still running. Yeah, it's still running. Yeah. Yeah. It's still going. Gone yeah, from strength well. to strength. It's gone from strength to strength. Yeah. My first ever album was The Smurfs Go Pop. <laughs> um, and The Smurfs Go Pop was an album done by the Smurfs of um, cover songs of very famous English and American pop music. And this is my first ever album, and uh, I really like the Smurfs. I oh, right. Papa Smurf and Smurfette and all those guys. The blue guys. They're kind of make-believe. Yeah. I thought they were... Kind of, I didn't know they did songs. Yes, mainly cover songs. Right. They didn't have much original content, ah. but they were, you know, they weren't actually real, so hard for them to create actual music. Yeah. Did they go on tour at all? Uh, well, I took them away with me over I went. Very so good. you could say they, they travelled the globe, yeah. They travelled, boy. Yeah. I took them to Greece, actually. Um, we're currently in Greece. And as a kid, I used to go to Greece a lot. Right. And I took this album with me on a holiday. Okay. Um, and this album was just so PG. It was just unbelievable. Okay. And my first, my favourite song on it was called Mr. Smurftastic. <laughs> <laughs> Playing on the Mr. Boombastic. Exactly, by Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was rapped by um, Papa Smurf. Mr. Smurf of course. Yeah. yeah. They call him Mr. Smurftastic. Yeah. So that was when you were how old? I was six when that came out. You were yeah. six? Yeah. Okay. And what were you like in Greece as a six-year-old? Were you tearing up the town? Well, I was six, so not really. <laughs> I, was, I was quite... I was probably naughty, but this song for me kind of marks the end of my innocence as a child. Your because... innocence stopped at six? Yeah, because after that, my next album was an Eminem album. And I started listening to hip hardcore hip hop, a lot of swearing. You know, the Smurfs didn't contain one swear word. Okay. So it was all really like PG, and I was like, "Yeah, the Smurfs go pop." Right. And then I turned a bit, a bit, a bit darker, a bit ruder, and I oh, learned. Eminem. I learned all the Mr. fun Slim stuff. Shady. So you've got a, a brother and anyone else? Yeah, I've got my brother who's older than me, uh -huh. called Luke, and he's getting married in. Uh, a week. Wow. You know, yeah, he's getting married in a week. And um, and he's uh, yeah, a bit older than me. And then I've got my sister as well. And she's um, not getting married in a week. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite confusing <laughs> yeah. and stressful for your parents. Probably. Yeah, that would be terrible of her. You would have to choose. Oh, 
Who do I prefer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be yeah. really, really not very nice of her to book her wedding on the no. same day as her brother. Yeah. That would be the definition of stealing one's thunder. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Your brother's the oldest and your sister is the middle child. Middle child. And then the, you're the little wee baby. I'm the wee baby. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you feel like you were the uh, little child all the way throughout? Or were you trying to beat your, your brother to things and, and show who's boss in some respects? I, yeah, I did feel like the youngest and um, I probably got away with the most. I, was the, I think I was the naughtiest out of the three. Right. Um, and yeah, I, really, I remember I really looked up to my brother, like literally... And metaphorically, but I yeah, yeah I was really like wanted to follow in his footsteps. Yeah. I went to the same university as him. I did the same sport that oh, he did. Oh, of course, of course, yeah, because he came to visit us at yeah. Nottingham Trent. Yeah, he did, and he had yeah, long he, hair like a girl. He did, he did. But weirdly, I saw the resemblance very, very clearly. Really? Yeah. What's your next song? I think it's time to go on to another one. Mm. Move away from the Smurfettes, hopefully. <coughs> hopefully there's not a, a, a second album that you're going to mention. No, no. Okay, so the next one uh, came in, it was 2002. Right. So I was 12 years old. Yeah. So six years after Smurfs Go Pop was released. Okay. Um, and this was around the time where I was like discovering that girls existed. Ding dong. Yeah, and um, that ties in really well with what the song is. I remember listening to this, Mm. um, sitting by the radiator in my old house, because that was my favourite place to watch the TV. I used to just sit against the radiator, sometimes on it. On on it? Sometimes, yeah. On the radiator. Probably that's really bad for piles. (laughs) That's what they say. Who's they? My mum used to say it to me. So if you sit on there, you, <laughs> you to say, if you sit on there, you get piles. Well, she's spot on. Well, yeah, because you ended up having to go to the pharmacy a year ago. Not now. Yeah. Hemorrhoids can happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a real thing, guys. Stay off the radiator. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were on the radiator. Yeah. Um, assisting your piles along. Yeah. And um, what were you listening to? I love you. Nah. Need you, baby. I love you. I love you. Dilemma yeah. by Nelly, which is on the Nellyville album. And oh. I remember I fancied two girls at the, sa- at the same time at school. One was called Charlotte Lant, and the other one was called Daniela Russo. Not naming names. No, yeah. we'll cut them out. Yeah, yeah. I really fancied them. Right. Um, what did they have to offer other than other girls in your class? Why um, were they so special? Why were they? S- they were very pretty. Um, uh, Daniela yeah. Russo was more the sports. That's what you look for. No, no, no. Right, Daniela Russo wasn't as naturally pretty as Charlotte, but okay. she was very sporty and uh, boisterous and fun. <laughs> and I really liked that. She was great fun. That like, you could yeah. treat her like one of the lads. One of the lads. Love that. At Charlotte. that young age? Yeah. Of 10? No, 12. 12. You said 12, yeah. 12. Okay, so she was a bit of a lad at 12. Yeah. But she was still, you know, pretty, put together, yeah. a sophisticated woman. She was a sophisticated woman. teenager, yeah, she was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I felt like I had a dilemma, like Nelly in the song. <laughs> uh, but Nelly's dilemma was different because he had a girlfriend... Um, and another girl moved up onto his block, um, into his neighbourhood, and he was like, oh no, what am I going to do? But I, my dilemma was very different, because I didn't have any ladies in my life, except my mum and my sister. So I was just like, oh, what do I do? Do I tell Charlotte that I like her and get rejected? Or do I tell Daniela I like her and get rejected? It's so hard. You could have um, helped them empathise, perhaps, by sending them the song. Perhaps. And, and just said, look, guys or girls, this is my situation. Hopefully you'll get my reference from this song. Yeah. And you'll be able to help me out a bit. You know, send me your pros and cons via email. That would have been good, yeah. Was it email back in those days? Probably not. Probably MSN. MSN. I don't know if I was on MSN by then. At 12. 12? I, I was. Yeah. Oh, you were? Yeah, yeah. 
You well, probably had a PC before I did. You still don't have one, though, do I you? I don't, no. no. <laughs> it takes him so ages to edit a video. It does, yeah. You try using a Nokia to... Uh... <laughs> so you were listening to Nelly at the age yeah. of 12. Uh, yeah. Did you ever put the plaster on to sort of pretend? No, I didn't. No. But he looked really cool, didn't he? Very cool. He was Very wicked. Cool. Yeah. He, he, apparently he did that because his brother was in prison. It was like... Mm, to remember that. his brother's in prison. Yeah. I don't know why a plaster does that. But. Yeah. Well, Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> if I fell seriously ill, would you wear a plaster on your cheek and just wear it for videos until I return? We could do that. Yeah. That if can that's be arranged. Your, if that's your wish being in the sick bed <laughs> or your dying wish. I think I'd like you to grow a full beard for... Um, I think you know. other people would as well. Mm. Another person in this room would like that Yeah, you much. definitely want that. Yeah. So um, you had your dilemma mm. with those two pretty girls. They were so pretty. I'm sure they were. And Not then... now. <laughs> you followed up. No, I don't know actually. They probably are pretty, yeah. I don't know them now. Yeah. No. I think one of them's married and the other one has a baby. Is it yours? No. We did kiss, though. Well, I've heard that that is another way to fall pregnant. Yeah. But about, I want to ask you a question. Right. When, um, when I was in that stage of, you know, dating girls in middle school, yeah. I remember that we used to all huddle together and there would be these arranged moments when you would kiss your partner. Just a, a peck on the lips, for example. Yeah. Um, I had one snog in middle school. That was my best moment. That was in a, of in life? a language classroom after school. Ah. We arranged it big with tongues and everything. They were like, yeah, come on, Harry, Harry. And I was kissing her like, Aah. How long did this snog go on for? 20 seconds. You counted. It was lit yeah, it was like, okay, they they're gonna snog for twenty seconds. Oh wow. Yeah. And everyone was mad. No one looked away. Because you know when everyone's like excited for the moment and then you realise Oh that's disgusting. Oh they did they not turn their backs? I don't know, I was so engrossed in the kiss I wasn't looking around. I was just like And your eyes were shut. Arms left? Uh probably, yeah, yeah. That was with Angelina. That was year six. Angelina. That was amazing. Uh, that was really nice. But yeah, did you have that? Snog. Did you have that kind of thing when yeah. you, everyone would push you together and you'd have to kiss? We did. Yeah, I actually um, have a, a horrible memory of that because <laughs> I was going out with this girl who, at the time, was very attractive and now is still very, very attractive. And all of our friends think she's hot. Okay. Um, and we gathered round. She was ready to kiss me. No, no, I was ready to kiss her, oh. and then she kind of backed out, and she said, I'm really sorry, you're too small. Ha! <laughs> no! I was quite small in year seven. Yeah. So she was like that height, and I was like that height. Uh, so it was kind of like a, a kiss upwards. Oh, that's so harsh. Yeah. Had you, how long had you been going out before that? We actually went out for a long time, for like nine months. And we, we were on the phone every evening for about an hour, just waffling. But you can't tell how tall someone is over the phone. No, we were at school together, so okay. we, we, knew, we knew each other. And we spent lunch times together and everything. But this kiss came after nine months. Nine months of courting. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, that happened. So I think we split up from that. After that, I got my, not revenge, but I, I got what I wanted, let's say, because the girl in my classroom heard that I was single, and she said, do you want to kiss me? <laughs> do you want to kiss me? So I went out with her, and uh, had my first snog in a disabled toilet at a party. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a toilet for very short people? Well, she was even taller than the uh, last girl, and I actually, we had the light off, and I was doing it with another friend, with his girlfriend. They were on the toilet, and we were in the other bit of the room. You know, a disabled... Oh, it's like an orgy. It was children. a bit of an orgy, yeah. But we had our clothes on. Sure. And I actually put, you know... You, you went on your tiptoes? Went on my tiptoes. Oh, wow. But it was in the dark, so no one saw. 
Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Anyway, back to you. This is the interview for yeah. you. Yeah. So that was the second song, Nelly yeah. Dilemma. Yeah. Let's go on to your next. So now we're going to a song that was released in 2004, um, but it continued to be an important song in my life, um, even right up until now, to be honest. Yeah. But especially up until like 2010 and the years where I started um, consuming alcohol and mm. going out on the pool or, you know, going out to try and meet girls and things like that with, okay. with my best mates. Okay. Did Smurfette uh, introduce you to women, do you think? Because ever knew... since that song, you've been talking about women. Interesting to say that because there are lots of other songs on that album um, it's sort of like, you know, find, find the Smurf, find the Smurf, um, where can the Smurf be hiding? And there's some quite loving songs, Wonder Smurf, Sounds a bit like rapey. Wonder Wall, Wonder Smurf. Okay. Um, there were a lot of songs that were kind of lovey-dovey, and um, Smurfette was the kind of subject of those songs. She was uh, the sexy Smurf that everyone wanted to get. She was the only Smurfette. Wasn't she? she was, yeah, she yeah. was the only one. So yeah. she was, she played hard to get. She certainly did, though. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so... Um, Papa's going to have a bit of a pedo, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, Papa meaning he's her father, right? Yeah, pop, yeah potentially. That's disgusting. Yeah, or like the Pope of the Smurf world. Oh, uh, okay. Still, he should be celibate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he shouldn't be smurfing anybody. <laughs> so it's an Usher song oh. from the album Confessions. Okay. And the song has got the same name, Confessions. Watch this. These are my confessions. Just when I thought I said all I can say, my shit on the side. He cheats on his, his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And the girlfriend, the, the person he cheats with, falls pregnant. And then that's, he's kind of in a dilemma as well, really. But this was a song that I used to listen to always with my mate Simo before we'd go out. Right. Um, the album was amazing. It had so many bangers on it. And uh, I loved it. And I used to just get very drunk with my friend in my room. Yeah. We used to play the Xbox, Burnout. Oh, yeah. Good game. Yeah. And we used yeah. to play drinking games to that. So if we took the other person out, we, the other person would have to down their beer. And my parents hated it. They hated it because we were binge drinking like idiots. Upstairs, listening to this album, shouting, being really loud, Larry, yeah. and um, drinking way too much. R Three adjectives for Usher. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Modern. <laughs> I was going to think smooth. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Cheating. Yeah. Disloyal. <laughs> yeah, but is it is it real? Or is he just uh, creating... Uh, material for his lyrics. I reckon this has probably happened in his life. Mm. I mean, not a lot of writers, a lot of song writers will um, write about things that have happened in their life. That's a shame. Maybe it's something he deeply regrets. Yeah, and he wanted to sort of confess to exactly. her. Yeah. And the kid that's now uh, going to grow up with a single mum. Yeah. He's now stacking shelves in Lidl. Wow, that's assumptions. That'll be his next album. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth song then. Um, I probably first heard this in my first year, or my only year, when I was living in Spain. So this is an important song for me because I had worked for a year and a half in England in a mm -hmm. job I hated. I'd been travelling, came back, worked in another job I hated, became a teacher, and then moved to teacher Spain. Teacher my first teaching English as a foreign language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my first proper teaching job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So your first first gig out in a foreign country. Yeah, uh, you did have some experience. I remember in Thailand, or yeah, another country in Asia. Yeah, yeah Cambodia. In Cambodia, yeah. sorry. Yeah, and you taught some very happy little children. Yeah, some basic English. Mm -hmm. And that's when you sort of got a, a glimmer of of hope towards a job that you quite like. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, and also, it was that trip that made me think, I want to learn language. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I remember Skyping you from America, and you were in Cambodia, and you had picked up a few words, and you were quite oh. excited by it all. Yeah. 
I you? was, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. I could have a basic conversation with someone at the market. Just with, just like... In Cambodian? Pigeon Cambodian. Really? Yeah. I mean, just like, no grammar at all. Just, just words. Just vocabulary. That's yeah. still very impressive, though. It was great. Because you weren't there for too long. I think I spent like three months there or something in total. So, I returned home from that trip. Yeah. And then, um, was kind of a bit down for a bit. Boo-hoo. <laughs> uh, worked in another job that I despised. Became a teacher. And what, was started, that, what was that job, roughly, about? I was a fun, charity fundraiser. Charity fundraiser. On the phone. Uh, like okay. a, a third party agency that was calling on behalf of charities. I was proper depressed. But during that time, every day, every morning, for about three hours, I was learning Spanish. Yeah. And that takes me onto this song. Yeah, nice. Very nice. So what's this song? So it's a song by Los Panchos, <clears throat> which are a Mexican... Um, Bolero group, they sing like um, kind of what well, their version of ballads. They kind of really love lovey dovey songs. Right. Um, it's like a mariachi band. So uh, three guitarists singing and harmonizing, and it's really beautiful. And they did a song called Algo Contigo. Okay. Which is something with you, um, something romantic. And um, my teach my Spanish teacher yeah. in Spain introduced me to this song, and um, we learnt it and did an, a, a listening exercise no, in a I class. Ain't. Ah, so very, very romantic. Oh my god! Yeah, so romantic. Okay, and um, musical as well. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Mm. So beautiful. I'd love to be able to like play the guitar like they do. Yeah, but, but I can't. Well, maybe maybe you could uh, while you have some time on the desert island. It's mm. mm. a bloody bloody good idea. <laughs> okay, so that's that's your fourth song, uh -huh. right? But yeah. let's just talk about that moment in your life. So you said that you were learning Spanish every day for a couple of months or maybe more, mm. and then you moved to Spain and, and did some teaching. Yeah. And um, what happened in Spain? Was it a good experience for you? It, yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah? Um, because I learned what I like and what I don't like about teaching. I yeah. learned that <clears throat> I don't really love um, working for an academy where okay. your hours are all over the place. Yeah. I was working some hours at 8 a.m. in the morning, and up to like 9, 10 p.m. Right. With kind of big gaps between classes. That was <clears> awful. Okay. And yeah. I, meanwhile, I was speaking with you on Skype between lessons. Yes. And you were like, man, you should just start working for yourself. Yes. I work like four or five hours a day. I choose when I work. Um, it's so chilled. I don't have to teach anyone that I don't like. And I was like, oh my God, I hate you. Because <laughs> I was... I had some kids' classes, and these kids literally hated my guts. It was horrible. <laughs> I remember. It was sending, so bad. You sent me a video of them just running riot in oh. the class, and you were just sat there like, I can't do anything. The worst thing was they didn't speak in Spanish in the school. They talked in Basque, uh, so I didn't understand a word. Where is the Basque region in Spain? Um, it's kind of uh, to the east of Galicia. And Asturias, mm -hmm. and then to the west of Catalonia. I always remember Bilbao. Bilbao, yeah, That's... great city. I was about an hour from there. Okay, yeah. And Bilbao is the ba within the Basque region, right? It is, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Basque is not Spanish. Totally different. Okay. In fact, the, the language is a complete mystery. No one knows yeah. where it came from. Did the Basque people speak Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they so pretty you... much all speak Spanish. You okay. might go to a really small town, yeah. a small community where they can't speak Spanish, but it's quite unlikely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was your fourth song. Yeah. Now, I am whisking you away to the desert island with no. those four songs. You've got those four, so you can listen to them as, as, as often as you like. Okay. Okay. And of course, you get um, what you've been waiting for, the complete works of Shakespeare. Oh, good. 
Yeah. Good. Yeah. Can You're I have them in Spanish? To practice yes. in Spanish? Yes, I'll give you that. All right. And okay. you also get um, the Bible or another religious book of your preference. That's guaranteed. It's in your suitcase already, so you can't sort of lob it out. Okay. Which, uh, which religious holy book would you like? I'd like something related to Buddhism. I don't know if they have a kind of religious manuscript. No, they don't actually. I was looking at really? this. They don't have a holy book, but there are Buddhist books that you could take. Can I, can I take uh, the writings, the, the kind of best quotes of Buddha? Yeah. In Spanish? Yes. In Spanish? Always in Spanish. Audio book. Do you think you'll forget English? Because there's been no one there to speak to you in English. And I just have loads of Spanish. Yeah. Maybe. Loads of Shakespeare in, in yeah. Spanish. Maybe you need a bit of English. I think I'll be fine. Maybe I don't not. think you forget your mother no. tongue, do you? I'm going there. I'm 27, nearly yeah. 28. I don't think I'm going to forget English. How long do you reckon you'll last? On a desert island? Yeah. Um... It depends on the island, how many coconuts they've got. They've got a sufficient amount of coconuts. Good amount of fish and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they've got enough fish. Okay. I think I'll be alright. Yeah. You think, what, for as long as you norm- you will uh, live? No, I mean, I'll probably end up killing myself. <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. Until I get completely but, bored. You know, there's, there's illnesses that probably could kill you that are very minimal in, in civilised life. Like, just a little cut... Infected, bam, lose your lose your foot, blood everywhere, dead. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. But if you took the Bible, maybe you could rip out the pages and sort of use it as a band aid, or find salvation in God. <laughs> in, which, in, in, which, in which case, I wouldn't really fear death anymore. So that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um. So your last luxury item. What's it going to be? Now, just to say, this luxury item, if you haven't ever listened to the uh, Desert Island Discs, this item shouldn't allow you uh, contact with the outer world, nor should it allow you uh, ways to escape the island. So you've got to stay there, you can't really speak to other people, but it's a luxury item I'm willing to give to you to send you away to this island. I think maybe a photo album Ah. of of, um, friends and family that I love. Very nice. Because otherwise, over time, eventually, maybe I'd forget what these people look like. And uh, I would, that would be horrible. Yeah. So I'd have to try and draw them on pieces of rock with like a bit of yeah. chalk or. Or on a Wilson volleyball. Yeah. So if that's my mum. Yeah. Oh, actually, maybe I should just take a vo- Wilson volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Never know, them. you might find one of them. Yeah, they do tend to like leave them lying around on they these do. islands. Yeah. And you wouldn't lose your mind? You wouldn't? I can't promise that, but <laughs> um, it, it, it could well happen. I don't know how long it's going to happen, but I think the photos will help me. I'll, I'll look at them and think, what would your mum say? Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we're going to send you on to uh, the desert island, but uh, it's been very interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Right. Wish me luck. <laughs> So, if you enjoyed that, give us a little thumbs up and leave us a comment as to what you think about Harry's choices and whether you think he will survive for very long. See you in another video. Bye for now.